I was a little worried, but on my drive into work, Harry Nilsson's 1971 hit, Coconut, came on, and I knew that today was gonna be okay. Put the tech in the news and drink them both together. Later, Cisco's thong song came on. <laughs> Sony, PlayStation, and AMD wanted to give a glimpse at the next-gen tech that will power the PlayStation 6, so who better to awkwardly read a script about that off a teleprompter, hey, than AMD exec Jack Huynh and Dana Carvey from SNL playing PS5 lead architect Mark Cerny. The update on the two companies' Project Amethyst collaboration detailed three apparently important technologies shaping its next-gen RDNA GPUs, with top-tier technobabble names, like neural arrays, radiance cores, and universal compression. These technologies will provide scalability as workloads grow and unified light transport, which are cool, but unfortunately the extremely hyped symbiotic frame reintegration was not mentioned. Why did I even come to this TED Talk? And besides, when is the PS6 even coming out? Well, according to one of our favorite leakers, Kepler, Sony is planning to launch the PS6 in 2027. So for now, you're gonna have to just let all those cool buzzwords rattle around in your head until you can envision just how totally gnarly this beast is gonna be, <laughs> I think. Intel has unveiled their next-gen Panther Lake processors. The company says Panther Lake is going to launch by the end of this year on paper at least, and it's going to fix everything. After this, smooth sailing. While Intel's previous laptop chips were divided into Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake families, this laptop generation will be Panther Lake all the way down and will apparently leverage the best parts of its predecessors, Lunar Lake's power efficiency and Arrow Lake's compatibility with Skyrim memes. I think that was the best thing going for it. Intel didn't reveal model numbers, but did specify three distinct package configurations, an eight core and a 16 core, each with four new XE3 GPU cores, and another 16 core with 12 GPU cores. Wait, wait, XE3? XE2 used Intel's Battle Mage GPU architecture, so that means XE3 is still Battle Mage. Of course, of course it is. Intel's Tom Peterson confirmed to PC World that the Battle Mage follow-up, Celestial, won't arrive until we get next, next-gen XE3P cores, which Tom is already starting to hype up. XE3P coming up? Ooh, chills, that got me going. <laughs> but to compensate for the disappointment, Intel also announced their new upscaling tech, XESS3, which will support multi-frame generation, beating AMD to the punch already thrown by Nvidia. But unlike Team Green, Intel will let all ARC GPUs use their new fake frames tech, even older A-series gaming cards. Like Intel's the cool older brother who will let his younger sibling play with his action figures. Nvidia's like, no, you break it, no! You'll decrease the resale value! Discord is calling out the hackers who breached the chat platform's third-party service provider. Not for the actual hack, they already did that, but for lying too. <laughs> What's next, parking in the handicap spot on the internet? <laughs> the hackers claim they've swiped the data of five and a half million unique users, including nearly 2.2 million photos of government IDs. Well, in an updated press release, Discord says, actually, they've only identified 70,000 users whose government ID photos have been swiped, which is barely any, and told The Verge that the hackers are circulating incorrect information as a way to extort payment from Discord. Now, we actually edited our story on this data breach in Monday's episode and pinned a comment with a correction because we initially implied the breach was connected to this year's wave of age verification rollouts across platforms. But it appears the IDs in question were collected before Discord's new age verification measures, which apparently don't store photos of IDs, were ever put in place. Now, Discord updated their press release again to underline this fact by naming the customer service provider that was breached. It's called 5CA. Because people keep being weird and saying this is a Discord breach, except it literally has nothing to do with Discord other than all the Discord user data that was breached. Just drop it, okay? And then check out our sponsor. 
Thorum and their handcrafted unique rings made of meteorite, whiskey barrel, World War II rifle stock, Damascus steel, dinosaur fossil, and other materials you hadn't thought of as something you could make a ring of. Well, get your brain out of that box, like this guy did. Thorum's founder, Caleb Martin. Back in 2012, he couldn't afford an engagement ring, so he made one himself, and then personally made 10,000 more, so others like you can wear your story too. And it's not just rings anymore. Thorum is now making beautiful, minimalist watches with the same wacky and quirky materials. Thorum's rings have over 10,000 five-star reviews. They ship in an American walnut wood ring box worldwide for free within one business day, and they got a lifetime warranty. Whether you need a wedding band, a unique gift, or you just want an awesome ring or watch, you don't need a reason. Head over to Thorum.com and use code TL20 to get 20% off. The link is in the description. The quick bits are actually ageless. They used to party with Harry Nilsson. Uh, the Quick Bits remember the lost weekend with Harry and John Lennon, but they don't talk about it. <laughs> Apple is making some tweaks to how their accounts work in Texas. Starting in January, Texas's new age verification law will require app stores and developers to check users' ages before letting them download apps. Apple says that if you're in Texas and create an Apple account, you will have to verify you're over 18. Otherwise, you'll need to join a family sharing group and a guardian will have to approve all your downloads and purchases, so make good choices. Developers will also need to adjust their apps to follow the rules, but Apple's really tools to help them with age checks and getting parental consent. Google also announced they're doing something similar, letting apps access info like users age range, verification status, and whether an account is supervised. Both companies are also laying out plans for what to do when the age verification government IDs inevitably get hacked. Step one, was it me? <laughs> California's been on a consumer rights kick. Governor Gavin Newsom just signed a law that will force browsers to provide a simple portal that will allow users to opt out of third-party data collection across all websites. Whether the browser companies actually add it is, uh, remains to be seen, but California also tightened rules on streaming platforms by banning jarringly loud ad spots from playing during streaming. It's almost like the state that houses many of the world's biggest tech companies has a better understanding of how obnoxious online data collection and advertising efforts have become. Maybe that's their home advantage. California knows the call is coming from inside the house, and now we just need to follow their lead to get away from these monsters. Ah, a loud ad. Battlefield 6 just launched, but not all its new players are actually getting to uh, you know, play the game. According to the Battlefield Comms Twitter account, some players are having issues with accessing the game at all, while others are just getting stuck in old fashioned queues. I mean, it's kind of nostalgic. Based on what I've learned about war from TV, getting into the military isn't always that easy, and soldiers do end up sitting around a lot between episodes of horrifying uh, conflict. So maybe Battlefield 6 is just striving to be more realistic. Good job. South Korea's online government services are reeling after a giant fire at a state data center. The blaze caused the suspension of 70 online government services and destroyed 858 terabytes of data, which was thoughtfully reported to be equivalent to 449 and a half billion sheets of A4 sized paper. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Worst of all, apparently the G Drive system, no relation to Google, it's government drive, uh, it was completely destroyed in the fire and they couldn't have backed it up according to an unnamed official because it was so big, too big to back up. Sorry. Although the incident is being reported as a battery fire inspired by K-pop demon hunters, I did some quick research about Korean fire demons and I'm almost certain these fires were caused by the dastardly Dokebi, and likely not the fire goddess Joangshin. Unless a housewife did something bad to a fireplace's hearth. Wow, that's something to Google. <laughs> and Figure claims that its new Figure 3 robot can wash dishes, clean floors, and handle other chores. Great, good enough. I'm a tired dad, I've seen the Jetsons. Bring on the snarky robot maids. In a video released by Figure, we get to see the Figure 3 doing all sorts of jobs, and it all looks pretty cool and, and potentially even useful. However, at around the last minute of the video, the music takes on a more sinister tone, and we see the robots doing uh, people's jobs. Hmm, <laughs> probably nothing. Figure's CEO, Brett Adcock, posted on LinkedIn that nothing in the film was teleoperated, which made me say, 
film? What are you, from Europe? But no, he's from Illinois. Anyway, if you thought I was being glib about these robots stealing your jobs, Figure has already had robots working on a BMW production line for five months. All right, all this automation better bring about that universal basic income everyone's been talking about, or otherwise, why did Bernie Sanders just post a 10 minute video talking about how dangerous the robots are? What are we gonna do about these robots? Hey, you know what? Let's all just relax, okay? I hope you enjoyed today's show. We won't be back until next Wednesday. Monday is a holiday, but please do come back. I found a wiki page for something called a novelty song, which includes mentions of Weird Al, Randy Newman, and Frank Zappa, so obviously I have a long weekend of research ahead of me.